Welcome to Albuquerque Real Estate Talk, episode 475, January 13th, 2024. Four. I know, got to think about that. It's that time of year where you got to think about what year are we in now. And and Tracy, you've got your uh, your Mahomes jersey on today. You're a little okay. uh, pretty excited about the, the Chiefs that are having a really bad year. Yeah. So Okay, um, not really bad, but... Well, it sort of cratered. I remember when they said that um patrick had he was sick they never yeah. said he had covid but he hasn't played well since then the whole team hasn't so i'm suspecting that they all have hangovers from a COVID. people or just tuning in are going to be going wait i thought this was a real estate show not a sports sports talk and and so yes we're going to talk real estate we're the uh, <laughs> venturi realty group with a uh, real broker here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, talking about real estate every week for episode 475. I know, I know you got, you, you're excited about your football. Sorry, she's holding up her jersey again. Um, and, um, but, but Tracy, what, you know, one big story, uh, help for home buyers. We want to, we want to cover that. Um, a few weeks ago, I had, I had said we were going to talk about cross market demand, you know, where are home buyers looking for homes um, th that are looking to move to Albuquerque, where are they when they're looking at homes in Albuquerque? That'll be interesting. Um, I, I, I teased that a couple of weeks ago and then we forgot to do it. And somebody mentioned that on YouTube and I'm like, oh shoot, yes, I forgot it. Yep. So anyway, I shared, I shared the information with that, that person. So anyway, thank you for calling me out. Um, and then, uh, let's see, what else do we have? I Tracy? Think we oh should... yeah. No, wait, one last thing. Top questions buyers have and sellers have always and forever and we're gonna just kind of give our give our take on those and our homes of the week of course but we have to go back to football so they're gonna have tomorrow saturday or on saturday the football game yeah they're gonna have like single we're, digit. we're recording friday so everybody yeah, yeah that's why you said like yeah. it's yeah. supposed to be like in this i don't know 10 degrees or something plus right. wind chill for yep. that game um, so it should be really interesting. So if you're listening on uh, Saturday morning and watching us on YouTube, um, Sorry, interesting. You... So here Go it's ahead. been a little bit cold, but lots of uh, good snow for our snow areas in the state. A lot of great skiing. You know, we talk with a lot of people who are relocating to New Mexico. And one of the things we always say is we've got great world-class skiing right here. You know, Taos is amazing, right? Yes. And, but we've got Santa Fe and we've got Pajarito and we've got Ruidoso and, you know. Well, the, you can be a purgatory in four hours and you can be, you know, in, uh, in some of the, the Colorado ski areas, you know, in six hours, you know. Just more some like the, eight for me, but Well, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, so, I mean, we're serious world class. You right, know? So, right. you know, we skied, your your brother and, and myself, we skied um, Vail last year. And I mean, it's just, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Anyway. So okay. some of the beautiful things about relocating to New Mexico is, sure. you know, and, and me, I love skiing Santa Fe because it's close and it's usually warm the days I go, you yeah. know, the sun's out. It's like growing up in Minnesota, skiing on hills. Um, it was cold. So you know, one of the things that, that Durango or purgatory uh, promotes himself as, is kind of like the Sun Belt ski area, because we do get the warm sun in the Southwest, yep. you know, it's a great and, way to go. Lake, some of those other uh, areas in Summit County and northern, you know, mid mid northern Colorado. I mean, they're beautiful ski areas, but it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of a fair weather skier. So, okay, Tigo, um, take it away. All right. So, first off, uh, top top questions of buyers, and this is kind of always always and forever. But uh, first and foremost, what's happening with uh, home prices and uh, in Albuquerque, we've seen somewhere seven, eight percent home price appreciation over the last year, which is which is higher than than you know long term average. Long term, we're more in the four, four and a half percent per year is what we've seen. You know, when you when you look over 20, 30 years, so seven, eight percent is still ahead, but it's definitely slower than we saw in twenty one, about seventeen percent. Twenty two, I think, was fifteen percent. You know, so or twenty and twenty one. Anyway, you know, it's it's home prices are still going up is the point. Mm -hmm. And going into twenty twenty four here, we see home prices, uh, list prices a little bit lower than uh, mid summer last year, but still eight percent higher than the same time last year. Right. I don't know. There was a lot there, but point is, home prices still appear to be going up, and there doesn't seem to be anything that's going to make them. 
um, crater interest rates. That's the other big questions, obviously, that home buyers are always wondering about what's going on with interest rates. We've seen a lot of relief in home interest rates recently. Today, depending, I always have to put that caveat in there, depending on your credit score and your situation and all that stuff. But six, uh, mid sixes, high sixes, six and a half, six, seven, five. Um, there's different programs out there that can get people a little better rate as well. And we're going to talk about one of those programs here in a second. And then uh, supply, inventory, the number of homes on the market is, we're basically equal with last year. We're ahead of 2022 in the number of homes on the market, but 2022 is an all time low in the number of homes on the market. Okay, maybe not all time, but at least as far back as I have data for. And so we, we do have a, a supply issue on, yeah. on homes. So if you are going to be buying, you need to be thinking about getting ready, starting, you know, doing that search, get with us, get with one of our, our team members to help you start bird dogging those homes and be ready for them when they come on the market. Cause you have to be ready because right. they are still selling fast. Right. And you know, our listeners, Tigo, they know this, they, they listen to us every week and they know it, but who do they know that maybe should be buying a house and getting in it sooner this year than waiting till March or April when more people will be competing for the number of homes on the market. So Sooner think, than later. I think that's a perfect segue to the MFA First Down Plus program that just released uh, today. As a matter, well, we're again we're today. recording Friday the 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 twelfth, but um, but released today and the it, funds were released. The for, funds were for released today. Claiming them today. We talked about this briefly last week, but let's let's get we got we got really good um, uh, detail from one of our great local lenders, uh, Joanna Rushing. And tell us tell us what we learned there, Tracy. So the first Down Plus program is like a third loan to help home buyers, first time home buyers get into a home. So the, the typical Mortgage Finance Authority down payment assistance program here typically covers um, the first down payment, right, on the house. Now they've released 15,000, flat 15,000, not up to 15,000. It's 15,000 towards down payment for a first time home buyer. Um, and that, what's beautiful about that 15,000 is it does not change your monthly payment. You do not pay interest on that 15,000, right? It's interest free. Um, and it can be forgivable. It's, it's, um, forgivable if you're still owner occupying that house for 10 years got to put all those caveats you know right uh qualifications and blah 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 everything apply you know there's but it is yeah you it is basically you get fifteen thousand dollars and that can be used toward just closing costs just i mean no just down payment. just down payment totally all 15 goes towards down payment it cannot be used for closing costs got it but the first MFA loan portion. The, the second, the second, the, yeah, the, the right. down payment. There's so, the yeah. first loan. The second loan is for down payment. And then the third is for um, down payment. Second can do closing costs. What we know, oh my gosh, this is such so a wait, good wait, program. Let, hold on. Let me just say this. The, the, the thing with this program, it does allow somebody that qualifies. Again, there's income quality. But basic, to to get into a home with zero money out of pocket. I was just going there and really... In talking with I Joanna, stole your thunder. yeah, that's all right. That's typical. Oh. Um, in talking with Joanna, she said most people that are using this program, the first down plus the MFA down payment assistance program, most of them will be out of pocket a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars when they close on the home. And part of that is we have some inspections that the buyer might want to pay for. Um, they're going to put down some earnest money up front that will go towards their closing costs at closing. But the, he, she feels like there's still probably 1000 to 1500 out of pocket to be in a home. What's amazing, though, is the home price can be up to, you know, even in the low 500,000 range for these programs. But of course, it's based on your income and there's income guideline limits. So, and yeah, when we say based on income, it's not 
you, you have to be under a certain limit. Right. Um, right. I think for, for two family or two person household, it was somewhere around a hundred thousand, right? I think it was over that, but yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this has to be used in conjunction with the MFA's first home and first down programs. It is forgivable. Like I said, after 10 years, if the borrower continually occupies the home for the full 10 years, uh, does not sell, refi, transfer title, rent out, or otherwise vacate the property. Yeah, Don't think, ask me about it. Yeah, exactly. Don't ask I mean, me how they know. Yeah. But I would say follow the rule. Well, it's for owner occupied. That's you know the, the rent piece. It's not like you can buy it and use it but, for, for an investment property. So let's talk about that, right? Okay, so somebody has to hold it, be their primary residence for 10 years, and they will forgive the $15,000. However, you haven't been paying anything on that $15,000 the whole time because it's a 0% interest third loan on the property. So let's say three years from now, you're in a better position financially or you get married and you have a second income or you have someone else that can be on a loan with you that you're not married to. Um, and you decide you're going to move up and you're going to buy a home that better fits your lifestyle and you have to sell this home to do that. All that you have to do is repay that 15000 when you sell your home before that, 10 years. That, that's a great point because I think people may be getting hung up on this idea. Oh, I have to stay in it 10 years. It's like, well, okay, no, you don't have to. But you can now get in a home and, you know, if you sell it in two or three years, you know, after the equity is built up. Right. I was going to say, yeah. you know, don't you think in three years or more from now, you're going to be way ahead on what the value of that house is at that point? So My crystal ball is broken. Um, yeah. So it, mm. it's, a, it's a great program, even if you end up having to repay it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Um, okay. So no, that anyway, that's a great so loan program. MFA program, uh, mortgage finance authority, New Mexico mortgage finance authority program, reach out to a local lender that specializes in these and, or, or reach out to us at the Venturi group and we'll connect you with a lender that can, can help you do this. Funds are limited, right? That's, the funds are limited. And so we know that as of today, people are starting to lock in how, you know, funds for that, that 15,000. I heard there might be up to 360 people who can benefit from this. And it's across the whole state of New Mexico. This is a, a state program, right? And there were people already in the process to get an MFA loan who now can add that to what they already had, that it's like bonus money just fell in their lap, right? Um, but who do you know? I mean, listeners, I mean, who do you know that is in a position that should be buying a house? I think the minimum credit score I heard is 620. 620. That's it. I mean, there's and, 619. You don't qualify. Right. Period. But what I know is some of the lenders that we work with regularly that really know this program, they know if you are really close to 620 and just maybe a hair under it, they know a few ways to help you get your credit score fixed quickly and rescore it. You know, if you're if you're just shy of 620, it can happen pretty quickly, probably while this money is still available. So think about it. Who are your friends and family members that should be buying a primary residence right now and taking advantage of an extra fifteen thousand dollars? So that's all I wanted to say that. That's all. That's well, it. I mean, it's like, oh, I know our no. listeners are are the best source to get it out there. They might not be the one that needs this, but they probably know somebody, whether it's a child, a family member, a friend that's renting or living with somebody else that may not realize that they don't have to have 20% down to buy a house. Yeah. Okay. Tracy cross market market demand. This yes. is something yes. we've, we've talked about in the past, you know, actually haven't looked at uh, recently. I don't know. In the last six months, we haven't brought it up, but I um, wanted to go back to it. And what it is, it's realtor.com, which is one of the large national, you know, home search websites, right? Thousands and thousands and thousands of visitors uh, every day on their website. And so people looking for homes, but what they do is they track, like when somebody looks at home in a certain market, Albuquerque, where is that person at? Because they know by the IP address. I was gonna say that's because of the IP address. Right, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody knows we're all tracked online. So um, the, the top market for people looking to come to Albuquerque is the Phoenix market, the Phoenix area. Um, of, you know, they're, they're that's smart. All those people in Phoenix should come here. Right. I yeah. mean, this is no. the best it's, no, I know, I know, I'm but kidding. it's, kidding. it's a great market comparatively. I mean, I love Phoenix, but to not have to be too far, if you still have relatives in Phoenix. Yeah. Right? Phoenix is, is, 
you know, we get compared to Phoenix a lot, and they're very, very different markets. I, think, I mean, it's a it's a big city. It how is about a big Tucson? Metro. Is Tucson on there? Because we're very similar to yeah, Tucson. Tu- Tucson is not on this list, but the so Phoenix is number one uh, at thirty percent. Denver then it drops all the way down to the Denver market at nine percent. And then Los Angeles, you know, we always hear the big story about all those Californians moving here. And you so know, this there, is where some, they're at, right? Yeah, Just yeah. to recap, this is where people are at when they're looking at homes for sale in Albuquerque on Correct. their website, on Correct. their computer Correct. yeah, or and, phone or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So Phoenix, Denver, L.A., and then the Chicago market, which is interesting. You know, it's interesting, though, because you think about Los Angeles and Chicago. I mean, those are huge metros, right? So you know, just sheer volume, volume. Exactly. And then Dallas, which again is another huge market. Um, and then Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, we always have to say that in New Mexico. Yeah. Got to qualify that. Um, and then, uh, and then New York, New York, New Jersey, Newark, um, Washington, DC, Austin, interesting. And then, uh, Portland. So It's really interesting, Tigo, because when I look at Chicago, I think of all the snowbirds that typically go to Florida or Phoenix or Mm -hmm. Palm Desert or whatever. I think um, in some of the conversations we've had the last few months, I feel like there have been a few more snowbirds that are thinking of New Mexico. And so it's kind of interesting to see Chicago on the list. Yeah, I'm again, it's a large market, so it's uh, I'm sure there's you know, just such a huge pool to choose from there, but I'm sure that it has a lot to do with it. And, and, you know, I still think New Mexico is vastly undiscovered as a, as a retirement destination. Yeah. Well, and we don't have a lot of like Del Webb active no. adult, um, no. newer kind of neighborhoods like Sun City West in the Phoenix area where right. there are a dime a dozen. Right. And I wish we had more because, you know, some of the active adult communities that we have here have just amazing resources, right? You're in a community with people who are probably in the same stage ages of life as you, Mm -hmm. empty nesters, want to travel, don't want to have to take care of a big yard, want to be able to lock it and leave. You know, some of the neighborhoods that I can think of um, that we have that are the Dell Webb properties. So Muir Haven is a good example. You know, they they are gated neighborhood, the one out um, in um, Bernalillo, Rio Rancho, that's a few years older now. Uh, that's a gated neighborhood. There's a clubhouse. So the Muir Haven one, I mean, the clubhouse is spectacular, you know, yeah. the pools, the bocce court, the views back to the mountains, um, just the community space and the activities that they plan there that you can partake in or not. You can just stay in your own little world or you can get to know people through book clubs and different investing activities or whatever people have an interest in and, um, you know, kind of have that house that's more manageable. It's newer. So I wish we had more of those because that neighborhood actually sold out really quickly, even though it's hundreds of homes Yeah. Um, right north of I-40 and um, off, not unsur, just further west, Volcano Vista, I think is the new exit out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's uh wish we had more. Yeah, no, I the I I heard economic uh, development person say something once, and I thought it was kind of interesting. Was, um, yeah, we want you know retirees in New Mexico because they have money and don't need jobs. Yeah, yeah, like, we need oh, more. Oh, we need more hmm. of those. Come okay. on, Del yeah. Webb, bring more. I bet there's <laughs> one in the works because they're so successful. Yeah. So Tigo, let's go to a topic that you didn't kick off at the top. Yeah, you have a secret topic for I have, me. I have a secret topic because it's actually stats. No. I don't want to like steal your thunder oh or gosh, anything, but I have me. I have a little topic and it includes some stats. So I went and looked um, one week back on MLS and I thought how many houses were under contract that fell out of contract and came back on market in the last week? And it was 49. Out of 15... In pending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And 150 homes had a price change. So just just kind of information. But then I looked and I went, okay, how many bank-owned houses came on the market in the last week? Or not the last week, since the first of the year. 
I was just kind of curious because that topic of bank owned and distressed properties has come up a few times lately from some of our listeners. I, I hope you don't burst my hypothesis on this. So since the first of the year in our multiple listing service in my search, I found one. <laughs> okay, it doesn't bust my hypothesis. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And then I look to see what what's actively on the market, not just since the first of the year that are bank owned. And in the whole MLS, which covers way beyond Albuquerque metro area, somebody in Gallup could put it in there if a realtor is a member of our board. And a lot of them are out of area. It was a total of 25 actively on the market bank owned right now in our whole MLS. And when I narrowed it down just to the metro area, so that would include, you know, Rio Rancho, Placidas, East Mountains. I kind of did a, a, a search based on just the metro area, it dropped down to 12. And when I looked at what's north of I-40 and east of I-25, because a lot of people say that's what, you know, what's Northeast Heights, right? Um, there was one. Got it. So they're not really in that part of town. Um, when I looked at pending bank owned properties, cause maybe, maybe there's just 12 on the market in our metro area because they go sold so fast. No, there's 19 in pending. And we know that it's, you know, 45, 35, 45 days from contract to pending or to close. So 19 is not very many, you know, when you think about the big picture. Another interesting fact about those properties, um, they averaged to go to pending from when they come on the market to when an offer is accepted of those 19. Actually, it was of the 26 in pending of the whole state. Um, it was 61 days to contract. Hmm. So a lot longer than I would think. Well, that's way different than average. Way. Way above average. Yeah. So what does that mean for bank-owned properties that are coming on the market? It means they're not like priced. They're not steals. They're not steals. They're not priced they're, to they're sell not, quickly. Yeah. They're not listed as a steal and it's taking time and they're going to either, either price reduce or the house is in such bad condition that you got to find the right person willing to take it on. Exactly. That's exactly what that means. And of the one house that's in the Northeast quadrant, which I, I defined for this as I-40 and above, not central, which would also make it Northeast. It's a, a HUD owned property, 282,634 square feet. Um, and it's been on the market for quite a while. And it's wait, priced wait, wait, 600 square feet? 1,634. Oh, 1,600, okay. Sorry. Um, it's been on the market for quite a while and it's a townhouse and it's right on Montgomery. The address is Montgomery and it's a townhouse and it's not a steal 282,000 for a 1600 square foot townhouse on a fairly busy road. And it probably has a HOA. No, I don't think it, well, maybe it does. It probably does, but may, may or may not be high. See, now I put you on the spot. Stat okay. Let, let, let me, let me, let me throw another stat out there. And this is back on market. This was, you, you talked about early, how many, homes that are on the market right now that are active had gone under contract and came back on the market. And I've got a stat for that right now, this week at 6%. So 6% of the 1500 odd homes that are on the market um, came back on the market. Now it could have been either they were under contract and fell through, could have been that they got withdrawn for some reason because you know they couldn't show it or, or whatever it is. Um, but that's actually lower than average for this time of year. It's actually very common to have 10, 12% of the homes um, that are currently active on the market had been on the market and came off the market. So that's one of these stats that I watch because if we see a big surge in homes getting you know, canceled or you know, an increase in homes coming back on the market, that's an indicator that there's something going on and, and buyers are getting nervous. Well, we're not seeing that right now at yeah, all. So yeah. just thought I'd back that up. Okay. So going back to that house and you said, does it have an HOA? You're absolutely right. It does. It's a townhouse. So of course there's some community, something or other 217 a month, it says, which seems yeah. sort of high. Well, and, and I think that's something people should, should understand is when we're talking condominiums, townhomes, um, yes, the prices are going to be lower. The price per square foot is going to be lower, but your monthly payment actually might be more than a single family detached without that HOA because of the high HOA. Right, right. 
Um, I did just refine the search since I was looking at it. And mm -hmm. I, I did like Albuquerque only for bank owned and there's seven. And actually two of them are in a pretty nice neighborhood, a pretty good area, uh, very convenient, just south of I-40, um, kind of the Altura, Los Altos type area. Um, and, you know, really near the, the parks and uh, uh, one's on Irby, mm -hmm. which is right. Very close to, is it, um, it's between Wyoming and Eubank, right by the Los Altos Golf Course. So two of them are right there by Los Altos Golf Course. So anyway, it's just interesting because we keep hearing people think that there's going to be a lot of bank owned and there's some some data on it. Yeah, no. Moving no, and, on. And yeah. Um, okay, so top three questions that sellers have. I'm going to put you on the spot. Top three questions that sellers have, and this is always and forever, but let's answer them for today's market okay. in January, 2024. So the number one question is always as a homeowner, home seller, what's my home worth? Right. And that's going to be very personalized, right? And that's something we can help with. Of course. You know, what your home is worth is um, very much dependent on the condition, the location, the finishes. We were um, talking with a, a broker we know in Santa Fe this week and talking about how much they can vary in price per square foot, even in the same neighborhood here and there. And he was like saying, yeah, if you've got a diamond plaster finished interior walls and vegas and wood in the ceiling in this, you know, Kiva fireplaces, and it's all updated with the latest and greatest versus a house down the street that's just sheetrock and, and doesn't have like the wood ceilings, the price per square foot or the value of that property is significantly different. We, we do have, have a tool available if people want to track their, their home value. It's on right on our website at welcomehomeabq.com, uh, right on the, the homepage, and you can put your address in, and it'll give you an automated valuation. But it's, it's more about tracking it over the long term. Go ahead. I was going to say it's a pretty good valuation generally, but if it's not, let us know, and we can give you one. Even if you're not looking to sell your house, we can do an equity analysis for you. Look at what you owe on your house versus what it might be worth today. So you can kind of track your equity in your home because I think over the last few years, a lot of people have increased the value of their home, but they don't really know what it's worth right now versus what they owe on it. And if they don't owe anything, obviously it's all equity. Okay, I'll say it again. Since the beginning of 2020 to today, Home values in Albuquerque have gone up 50%. It's 49 point something. So don't don't um, exaggerate too much. You're killing me. Yeah. I know. I, I, I'm i the Mr. You know, I'm Mr. Data. You know, get the data right. You know, don't don't exaggerate. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was a shorthand. All right. Second so, question so the, that home sellers always have. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Pricing first. Price, pricing is. What's it worth? Is, always what's it worth. But how long is it going to take to sell? There's a stat for that. There's always a stat. For there's that. always a stat for that. But what um, we know is there's always an average and that doesn't mean much. Exactly. So average for December 2023 was 34 days in the Albuquerque area. And historically, that's extraordinarily low. Right. Right. And median, which is which is an I, I kind of like this one even better because it kind of says, OK, median, meaning middle ground. Half the homes sold in this many days and it's 18. So half the homes went under contract from going on the market to going under contract in 18 days in December. Now that's way up from, you know, it, it, there was one from point. From summer? Yeah, just from in, in May, that was five days. Right. I remember on our show, I'm yeah. sure our listeners remember when we were saying three days, five days. Well, the median, here, get this, the, the lowest median ever recorded, median days on market in Albuquerque was three days in April of 22, which is right on schedule. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, was the, the peak craziness of, yeah. of our market, no doubt about it. So, so yeah, I mean, it's, you know, days on market really depends. It depends on the neighborhood. It depends on the price point. It depends on a lot of things, but on average homes are still selling relatively quickly, um, in our market compared to uh, long-term trends. And then the last question that, that home sellers have is how do I pre prepare my home for sale? What, what do I need to do to get it ready for sale and that's really where we come in and you know we really hope that if you're thinking about selling that you call us before you start doing things to get ready for sale don't wait till you have the house ready 
because we would love to get in early and help you put together that list of what you're going to do to get your home ready for sale so that you do the right things to net the most. Just like that, Tracy, 30 minutes, bam, and we're done. And oh yeah, you're going to show up. She's going to put up her uh, Mahomes jersey again because she's like, don't you know, forget, there's a lot I've got of, a good friend that's a, a, good a, Mi a, a Miami fan too. So now I'm like torn here. Okay. Oh, let's you're see. not torn. Uh, yeah, uh, the Detroit's still in it too. Oh, so, I, know, I, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of football coming up. Oh, by up. the way, go blue. Yeah. I'm an Ann Arbor guy. So I was pretty excited. Uh, this, that Michigan this, ticket. Uh, Monday, that, that was fun. So. Yeah. Anyway, thanks everybody. It's the uh, Venturi Realty Group with Real Broker here in Albuquerque. You can reach us at 505-448-8888 or our website at welcomehomeabq.com.